Hi guys, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and we got a pond. So this is going to be a progress build video on if you want to start a little backyard pond. And before I go into the actual pond build, I wanted to give you a little bit of base information. And I'll also say that some of the clips may not look like they line up exactly because we've been moving plants around the pond and we also did a full clean out of the pond recently while we were finishing the filming of this video. Because like I said, it's a progress build. So we decided to add a backyard pond for a couple of reasons. The first was that uh, my parents live in the area and have built one. We took our time, like you'll hear in the rest of the video, we took our time with expenses. So it wasn't like a huge hit all at once to our budget. But honestly, this whole entire build, including the fish and pond plants and you know other silly things that you don't necessarily need, I'll, I'll say on the high end, like me overestimating, probably 250 bucks total. So. The pond build that you're gonna see here is a 50 gallon build. And the other reasons that we wanted it are, I mean, if you're on this channel, if you're familiar with me, you know that I love plants. And you know, obviously we have the chickens. And so it was another thing to just help make our backyard space come alive. You know, we definitely are naturalists. We like being outside all the time. We wanted to attract more wildlife with having this water here and running water. It's already encouraged. We've gotten frogs, we've gotten different kinds of birds and little lizards and all kinds of stuff. So. We'll go through and show you the different aspects of the build, but what we ended up doing, and I'll flip the camera here in just a second and give you a quick tour before we kind of break down how we set things up. We ended up using, like I said, a 50 gallon over ground, like above ground or underground pond, just the rubber frame, the plastic frame that you can buy. You'll see we ended up partially burying it, but not completely burying it. And then of course, leveling it out on the ground. But what we did first is, we moved it around in the yard without digging the yard up at all and we filled it and then we just kind of would come out and we would kind of rearrange the plants and decide where we wanted it we didn't want it to be in too much shade all the time because then if you have pond plants and stuff like that they won't usually thrive as much but when you have a lot of sunlight your plants are thriving but there's a lot more algae growing so it's fine it's finding that balance so we played around and tested it and then like, no, we don't really like it. So then we'd kind of move it to a different spot before we got to the point you'll see in the rest of this video. We ended up using just some river rock that we found around on our yard that's there lining the bottom. And we honestly, you don't have to do that. We just did that so that you could see the bottom a little bit better instead of it just being like a black abyss down into nothing. And then we used the more of the flagstone, the flat pieces. And that serves more of a purpose. That's how we were able to build sort of a shallow table or a, a, a shelf for our pond plants. And also we made it into an overhang with the way this pond shell is built so that we ended up making a little cave space where our homemade pump and filter can hide as well as where the fish can hide. So you are able to use hose water to fill up your pond. You don't have to have filtered water or go buy gallons of bottled water or anything, but you will use what's called a dechlorinator and that will basically neg negate or kill the chlorine that's in the water because your fish, if you end up getting pond fish, are very sensitive to any kinds of you know poisons or chemicals or water additives and stuff like that. So we started out with the pond shell and the river rock and the flagstone. Everything was rinsed out really well with water. You don't need to use bleach and soap and all that stuff, but do rinse it out, especially with the porous rocks to make sure that you're not you know, getting any kind of unwanted bacteria or anything in there when you're going to be submerging it. You'll see we got the little solar powered water fountain basically it comes with the solar panel and the cable and then it sucks water up right underneath the fountain and then it's just it's just circulating the water it's great for oxygenating the water it's also great if you want local wildlife because then they hear the running water the fountain sound so it'll attract more wildlife but you have to remember that while it's circulating the water and that's great it's not really filtering or cleaning out your water and so a big part of this video is going to be you seeing the actual little filter that my husband designed and built it's really cheap it costs like 10 bucks but then it's working with that solar powered fountain so that it is actually filtering there goes another monarch 
filtering and cleaning out the water as it goes instead of just circulating it and moving it a little bit, if that makes sense. The last thing I'll say before I cut out of here is that I do have affiliate links and I'm going to do a quick article on realsimplemama.com where you can see hopefully the photos of the things that we have purchased as well as get affiliate links. And that way, if you're like, hey, I wanna build that setup that Real Simple Mama has got, you can just go click, 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 and you can buy those things. And then I'm going to do a separate video really quick on realsimplemama.com that shows the initial build of this pond. It's literally like a four or five minute video tour talking more about the fish and the pond plants. If you wanna see more of that, this is going to be more of just the pond build. So I hope that's all helpful. Of course, drop questions and stuff down in the comments, and here we go. So we had the pond filled for about a week. <laughs> My kids are looking for worms in the dirt. So now we're gonna level it, make sure we're good to go. We'll fill in dirt around it. And then the next step will be pavers, getting the pavers really clean and letting the water sit a little bit. We've got the solar pump that we're charging. I mean, it's pretty straightforward as far as setting up a pond. Yay. So. Here is the pond set up with clean water. We've put dirt all the way around it. We've leveled it, checked it. There's that solar panel. We'll show you the build that my husband did to add like a little filter with some sponge material. So now it's dug into the ground. And the next step is we are going to get some pavers. You can use any kind of pavers, concrete stones, things like that to go in the pond. You do want to spray them really well with a hose, just with clean, fresh water. And then we are gonna let those acclimate for a while. And then we plan to add a few plants like water lilies. And then last, after everything is established, then we'll add the dechlorinator and then we'll put some koi in. We are going to use koi because they do not need to have constantly filtered or constantly moving water. And also koi, unlike goldfish and some other pond fish choices, koi are vegetarian, which means they can live off of the algae and just the detritus coming off of the plants that you put in there, the roots of the water lilies, for example, or algae that's growing on the side of your pond. And because they are just vegetarian, and they don't have a slime coat, it means that you don't really ever have to clean out the pond that much. You're not gonna be coming out and doing water changes like you would with an aquarium or having to come and clean up fish poop out of it and you know vacuuming it out and that kind of thing. So the koi are gonna be a lot more low maintenance. What we're going to do is have a koi food ready to go in case we feel like our guys are not getting enough food just based on the algae and the plants that we have in there. We've got a food that we can give them, but again, they're vegetarian, so they won't make nearly as much of a mess in the pond as goldfish or another type of fish might. And the shallow end of the pool, you can see is this step right here. So here we're just going to add a few pavers as necessary and then have most of the plants probably here. And then we hope to have the stones overhanging a little bit so that the fish can have sort of a little cave where they can go and hide. The other thing that's gonna be great about this is irregardless of whether it's above ground or not, because this pond is as deep as it is. So that's only half of the depth of it. The rest of it is, is buried. So the narrow end is sitting on the ground and the deeper end goes further into the ground like that. The fish, if they can get somewhere down deep towards the bottom of the pond, that will keep them warm, even if the top of the pond freezes. But you know what? It may not because it's in the ground and it's that close to the house. And a lot of predators who would come around, especially nocturnal predators like feral cats, raccoons, possums, things that we know are in the area, they won't be able to get that deep into the water They'll put their arms in, but if the fish can get deeper than the arm's reach of a raccoon, for an example, then hopefully they'll be good to go. So we're going to continue to make this look nice, but right now we're just hanging out, making sure that the solar panel's in a good place, that we like the way everything looks, everything looks good, and then we're going to start adding things, but the koi will be last. Okay, so we wanted to show you the difference that this little addition makes. So this has been running for about a week. And I apologize for the, the background noise. But here we have what used to be this, nice and spongy and fluffy. And you can see 
what it looks like now. So we wanted to show you how this little filtration hack, this little build that we did, that's what, that's what they look like now, those gray, soggy rags. Now to an extent, you can wash these out and rinse them out just with the hose, just with plain water and put them back in, but there will be a point where you feel like the texture of them starts to change. That's magic. So we suggest you check it about once a week or so. And once they start to not feel the same, you'll, you'll be able to tell over time that the texture will change. Um, then that's when you know it's time to replace them. So these are reusable. They are washable to an extent, but eventually you will have to replace them. But now you can just see ugh, what a difference a week makes, right? All right, so now you've got your pond set up in the ground, right? And of course you don't have to have plants yet, but we wanted to show you the setup that we chose to go with um, because we wanted to have a pond filter, something cleaning the water, something circulating the water, but the setups that we found were kind of expensive. So this is what my husband figured out and what he chose to build. Right, so, um, I mean, it's a fairly small pond and even the smallest filter pond filters that I could find were like this size and that's a little overkill for a, a little pond like this um, and they were kind of expensive, but we didn't want to have we didn't want to not have any filtration right. um, just to make it so we wouldn't have to change the water as often. So what we did was we bought this little um, solar powered fountain um, that comes with a little, a little pump and it comes with the cord and the solar panel over here. And the way it's designed to work is it comes with these floats and a little spout and it actually is supposed to attach directly to the, to the pump and it just floats on the surface of the water and it and it uh it has a little fountain but obviously this doesn't filter anything it's just pumping the water right so what i did was i got a plastic container like this i put some rocks some little pebbles on the bottom just to give some space to the to the pump so the water can flow into the vents here and for microorganisms to be able to to grow and actually this model came with a little suction cup so it just sticks right to the bottom of it like that okay um then what i did was i bought some plastic tubing at lowe's um i took my i took the spout in and i found some that that fits into the spout and the way this works is this is large enough to fit over this tube right here. Mm -hmm. So if I find something that fits inside here, the other end is not gonna be right. large enough to go right. over this. So what I did was I boiled a small pot of water and then I stuck this end in the boiling water for mm -hmm. a minute or two Softened to it soften up. it up. And then I forced it onto there and let it cool. And now mm -hmm. it, it formed, you know, it reshaped itself to where it fits right there. So this end goes here, this end goes here. But before we attach it there, we have to put a filtration uh, medium over the, the pump. So at Lowe's, at the same, at the same store, um, in the pond section, they sold these, uh, filter, this filter material that goes with the larger filter um, that fits inside of it that's more expensive. Right, but, that overkill one. Right, so I just... I bought this little refill pack for like six bucks, I think. Okay. Um, I took the coarse uh, sponge and I cut it in half and I cut it so that it fits inside there. And I put a hole in it like this for the tube to go through. Okay. okay? Then what I, what I did was I took two of these, folded them in half and just kind of stuck them on either side of the pump just to kind of cover this the space like this and so now as the water's being sucked in it's being forced through all those different types of sponges exactly. right okay and then the coarse sponge goes on top the uh the cable just comes out the side like this and now what i did to the lid was i cut some slots using an exacto knife um, i fed the uh the cable through one of the slots 
and I made some pretty large spaces so that water could go through there. And then I made a little hole in the center for the tube to go through. And now this just sits right on top and I can close it like this. And what will happen is the pump will pull water through these spaces mm -hmm. down through the, the, the filtration medium into the bottom through the pump and back out through the tube. So we added a piece between the little part that just sucks water up for the sake of it being fountained, right? For the sake mm -hmm. of it being just sprayed out the top, just because this solar piece, the solar set that we bought, its job wasn't really to clean the water and filter the water. It's just circulation. Mm -hmm. It's just so you have a little fountain going. So what my husband did is he created this whole little Tupperware setup, this little kit at home that cost, I mean, what, what do you think all of that cost? There's a Tupperware, there's a couple well, of rocks. What do you think? The, the Tupperware we had, and that right. was really cheap. The sponges, I think, were like six bucks. Okay. And the tube was just a couple dollars okay you may and, even have some just laying around right and then those the white filter sponges they are reusable to an extent and we'll mm. show you in a minute uh, what they look like before and after but you can hose them down and mm. clean all of them out and then put them back in for a while so it's not even that you're spending six bucks a week but instead of spending you know 80 or 100 dollars on a gigantic overkill pond filter system that's going to take up you know a ton of room in your little pond or as opposed to you not having a filter at all and you've got water circulation, which is great, but it's not cleaning anything. Now we made a little kit that goes between the solar panel and the little pump right. and then it spraying out. So then this, we just stick under here. And you wanted it to be pretty close to the, to the bottom, right? You think, um, what do you, what do you think about placement? It doesn't this? really matter. Okay. I just want to hide it down here as long as it's submerged. Okay. Um, and then this, we just let it float on the surface of the water like this mm -hmm. and it'll just run on its own with the solar panel right um dirty water goes in there clean water comes out here so now you've got circulation and keeping the water moving to help oxygenate it and you're cleaning it at the same time and how often do you think that people should take out their little tupperware pump and spray the sponges down and stuff you think about once a week i would say about once a week that's what i've been okay. been doing and then maybe a water change once a month okay you, uh, you remember you don't want to you don't want to change it this far down right. every right. time maybe just about you know yeah no more thirds, than like 20 percent yeah one one third down okay. or something like that okay ta-da so now we have our rocks in the bottom we have all of our flagstone everything's been rinsed off so it was clean we filled it up with hose water but we did add the dechlorinator which you want to add every time you do a water change. We've gotten a couple of our pond plants in there who are really super happy. And so now the only thing you need to do is get fish. We do plan to look into getting a Plecostomus, which is a sucker fish that eats algae. And then of course we have our solar panel hooked up in a way that we're gonna have water circulation. So we hope you enjoyed this video. There will be an article on realsimplemama.com that also has all the affiliate links to help you start your own pond in your backyard. I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama. Thanks so much for watching.